Good morning, sisters. How are you guys? I am tucked away in a guest bedroom here at my um, son and daughter-in-laws here in Medford. So I just wanted to pop in and just do our devotional. I know that um, that um, I normally blog then, but life's been a little wild. And so I just wanted to come on here and just have some coffee with you guys and just teach a little bit of what the Lord's been showing me. And usually that's where most of my writings and inspiration comes from is when God is in the middle of teaching me something. I I can only teach what he's imparting to me. So there's no authority in me teaching somebody else's stuff. Hello, Amber. Hi, Adriana. So good to see you guys. So um, today's lesson I titled Finding New Hope in a Long Season. And I mean, I guess we could probably put that in another way, finding new hope in the same season, finding new hope in the same place. But what I really want us to focus on is what it looks like to find a fresh dose of hope in something that has just been lasting forever or has felt like it's been a long trial, a long trudging of of fighting. And one of the things that I am guilty of, and maybe some of you are too, is when I am going through it, sometimes I just get my head down and I just I just want to get through it. I truck, I trudge, I just march my way through a trial or a um, a season of suffering. Um, and so I just really want to just get it done. And I'm like, just get your head down, just stay focused. And we can't always do that we're in, when we're in the middle of a trial, although it's good to be steadfast. That isn't a steadfast movement. Sometimes we just embrace suffering, and that's not what the Lord wants us to do. He's not asking us to embrace the suck. I mean, it's not. I know it's a marathon, and there's things that we've got to run and do, but there are moments where the Lord wants us to find a reprieve. He wants us to find a fresh breath in the midst of the same trial. My brother does Ironmans. And I mean, if you've ever seen somebody train for them and run for them, it, to me, it just looks like, I mean, you'll never see that. You'll never see that ran 26 miles on my car. That's not going to be there. Um, but he's done many Ironmans and he's amazing at them. And the training that he does and he puts in them, I mean, he just gets his head down. And when he runs, I've watched him run. He did the biking, he did the swimming, and then you have to, or the swimming and the biking, and then the running. And it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And those are things, you know, you sign up for. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know why. But sometimes that's what happens with us. We get in there and we're like, just get it done. This is one trial. It's one big Iron Man, Iron Woman. And we're like, all right, I got the swimming. I've got to do the biking. Now I got to do the running. And you just get your head down. But the Lord is saying, and I just feel like he's wanting to say to us today, stop. Stop for a second. Stop for just a minute. And just, and just let me revive you. Let me revive you. We can get in these long seasons of suffering and trials. Sometimes it's our health. Sometimes it's moments where we're watching our loved ones go through it. That's kind of where I'm at right now, where you just, you're watching and you are enduring. Am I speaking to anybody today where you just feel like you're enduring and you're enduring and you're enduring and it just feels like you get up and there it is again and there it is again and there it is again. And the Lord took me to Elijah in, I think it's 1 Kings chapter 17, where Elijah, the Lord sends Elijah to the brook and he sits by the water and ravens feed him. Now, if there is anything that, that we can draw from that is Elijah is a man who went through the trials. He just, when he signed up to follow Jesus, it was one thing after the other, after the other for him. And so the beginning and in the beginning of all of this, in the beginning of a famine, in the beginning of things where it's just going to get started for him, he is being told, sit, let me 
send someone to water you. Let me send something to feed you. I want you to sit here and fill up. I want you to draw in, soak it in. And when we're in a marathon of trials and it just feels like we go from one, it just, we're jumping hurdles. We are, we are lifting heavy um, weights. It just feels like it doesn't stop. I want us to come to that place where the Lord says, I want to set you by still waters. Let me lead you to some still waters. Let me put you in a pasture of green grass and just sit here. Even though the trial is still there, even though there's a long suffering that we have to endure, maybe it's just, maybe it's just something that feels like a forever marathon of trials. Yes, Imelda. It feels like a forever marathon of trials. It doesn't mean that he wants us to just get our heads down and just suffer. That is not his intention for us to just get our heads down and just endure with, a, with this long suffering, just fight, fight, fight. Sometimes our biggest fighting effort is sitting, resting, and letting someone bring us water, letting someone bring us food, letting someone serve us, letting someone come into our little broken place and say, can I just help you for this one moment? Can I just, can I just bring you a coffee? Can I bring you a cheeseburger and fries? Yes. These are those moments where God refreshes our hope in the middle of our long trials, we're in the middle of it. And I, and I know it's a, um, there's just things that we can't get out of. When you're raising children and you're in the trenches and it's long haul, you are, you are getting through. And some days they feel like they're on repeat. I can remember when my children were younger and it just felt like my days were on repeat over and over. It was the same thing. Laundry's never ending. It was, the, it was just if one got a cold, then they all got the cold. And let's just bring in chicken pox to the mix. It just felt like this long, just kept going and going and going. And then you look back one day and it's, it's over and you're sitting in their house holding, their grand, holding your grandchildren. And I say all this because in the moment it feels forever. And we've got to stop and just rest in it. Let sit by some still waters. Sit by the waters. The Lord is wanting to bring to you a fresh drink of water, a new hope. He wants to breathe new hope into you while you're going through the same trial. And it might be the same thing today that you faced yesterday, but it's time to gather a new hope and grab a hold of that where he says, return to your fortress, O prisoner of hope. Return to your fortress, O prisoner of hope. Even now I will restore to you twice what you've lost. I love that scripture. When he says return to that, go back to that hope that you're holding on to. When you first started out, go back and remember how the Lord carried you. Go back when you felt the spark. Go back when the trial was just getting started and he was feeding and watering your heart. He was preparing you. Go back and re revive that. Stir up. It tells, Paul tells Timothy to fan into flames the good deposits. Those moments right there when we can stir up our hope and revive our hope or grasp a new hope in the middle of the same trial, the same struggle, the same, the same battle that we were battling yesterday. But when we get a fresh perspective and we are marching around that same wall, that same wall again, and that same wall again, and that same wall again. It feels redundant and crazy, but there's going to be a moment when new hope comes. God's going to fall upon us with an authoritative shout, and he's going to say, now, now lift up your voice, and walls are going to come down. Sicknesses are going to be healed. We're going to watch miracles, because not only did you be obedient to hold on in the midst of your trial, you were obedient to to respond to a new hope that was being offered, and you didn't ignore it by just saying, I just got to get through this. Don't ignore the new hope that Holy Spirit is breathing on you right now. Don't ignore it. Right now, in the midst of it, stop and say, Jesus, I'll take that new hope. I'll sit by that water. I will let ravens feed me. Ravens can come in different ways, friends. Ravens can come with somebody sending a gift card. Ravens come with somebody sitting next to you. They come with somebody bringing you a drink. They come with somebody seeing and hearing and reaching out and saying, hey, you're doing a good job. 
you're doing a good job. When you feel like you're just barely holding on, those words of hope and encouragement revive you and say, I can keep going. I can keep going. I can keep going. So today, keep going. Keep going. Let the Holy Spirit breathe into you new hope. New hope in your same season that looks like it's just going on forever. We can flip the script and we can begin to look at our seasons and seasons can change in an instant. But in the middle of it, we don't see the change. We just feel the suffering. So friends, don't just trudge. Don't just trudge. Stop. Stop and let him revive your hope. Let him revive it, and then you can get back up with a different perspective in the same season. I love you so much. Let me bless you today. Can I just pray with you right now? And and just in the thread as you're watching this and as other people are watching this, put, put out there where you are needing a new word, a fresh word in the same season. Let our team and the women in this group come in and be ravens and and feed you let us be a babbling brook and speak over you put in the in the comments where you're needing a, a new uh i want to say a defibrillator that's what um my buddy um, amber always says defibrillating our hearts let us be part of that can you do that for us let us know that you if you're needing a, a just a new zest a new zest for your hope. Jesus, right now I bring my sisters to you. I thank you so much that they're even tuning in at a, at a 1045, 1050 on a Thursday morning. Lord, I ask that if there are girls out there that are just going through it and the battle has seemed long and the trial has seemed endless, Lord, I ask today that they begin to feel a fresh hope come in and revive their hearts. They feel clean air come into their lungs. They feel a new wind blow across their face. Let them know, Father God, that even in the midst of a long season, you can breathe in a new hope, a fresh spark, a new step, a zest, Lord, to help them finish the race. Because one day, God, they will round that last lap. They will go around that wall one last time, God, and they will be able to say, I endured and I got to see the walls come down. And when we can shout, when we can shout and get that moment when the walls come down, Lord, remind us of the days. Remind us of the days that we just marched and trusted and let others feed us and let others bring us a cool drink while we were weary. Lord, we just give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. I bless my sisters today. Bring them into a spacious place. Yes, teenage years suck. I agree. Thank you, Jesus. Sandy, we're praying for a new zest for you. It's been tough. We're going to ask for a new zest in Jesus' name. A new zest. We ask for a new pep in your step right now in Jesus' name. I see Renee, one of my closest friends, Devin. Dyler Parton passed away of cancer. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We pray for that family as they have children that are enduring. Lord God, as friends and family rally and feed and water them, make them sensitive to what to say and not to say in Jesus' name. We ask, Lord God, that as we as we rally around our hurting friends, that you make us sensitive to sometimes just offer the drink and shut our mouth. Just offer the, offer the casserole and then just love. Not everybody needs advice. Sometimes they just need a cool drink of water and the presence of understanding. Let us be aware of that in Jesus' name. I love you guys. I love you so much. I hope you were encouraged today. I hope that you anchor to this word and let Holy Spirit come in and just revive your hope, give you a fresh hope. And even if the scenery doesn't change, he can change our hearts and he can make all things new, even in the same season, even in the same minute, you will feel a freshness in the same minute in Jesus mighty name. Mwah. I love you all so much. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you later.